to minus 2 cos x minus 2. So you should all have uh, sketched the graph and it looks like that. Now, uh, we are supposed to write down the amplitude. So, the amplitude of the graph the amplitude is going to be equal to, uh, to positive 2. Right? Remember, to find the amplitude, you can just use the formula y max minus y minimum all over 2. So your maximum value is 0 here. Yeah? Your minimum value is negative 4 there. Yeah? So 0 minus, minus 4 will give you a 4, then you divide that answer by 2. Or you can just convert that negative 2 to a positive 2. That becomes your amplitude. The period is 360 degrees, right? The domain x is an element that starting from 0 degrees up to 360 degrees. The range, our minimum is negative 4, so it will be y is an element that starting from minus 4 to 0. So you should have that. Then, I also asked you a question which was saying uh, for what values of x is f of x less than 0? So you needed to tell us what value of x is such that f of x is less than zero, right? Now, I'm sure you can see that the whole graph, right, is below zero, except at this point here, where, it's, where uh, y is equal to zero. So what that means is our answer for, uh, for that question f of x is less than 0 between x equal to 0, which is at the origin there, and x equal to 180 degrees. And also, all the values of x that are greater than, uh, that are greater than 180 degrees. So, my suggestion, you can write your answer as x is less than 180 degrees, or x is greater than 180 degrees because all the points to the left but now the thing is we also have to include zero so my suggestion okay let me correct this one here. let me correct the first one because the first one you, need, you must also include zero so the first one you can write as zero degrees is less than x x is less than 180 or the second one you say 180 degrees less than x is less than 360 degrees. So between those two intervals, your values of y are negative. So remember, we want an interval such that the y values are below the, <coughs> the x-axis. Is that clear then? Then, but where's what any question, please? No, sir. Sir, I have a question. Yes. Um, I want to know exactly how. Uh, I want to know exactly how the, you know, like the a value, you know, like how it taught us the general equation for this question. Negative two would be the a value, right? Hmm. I want to know exactly how it affects the amplitude because, like, I don't understand how, you know, this graph looks. I understand the difference. <laughs> okay. I would say it's all right, all right. Remember what I told that A is a factor. We can call it a stretch factor. All right. By stretch factor, we are saying there is an original graph which was transformed by that factor of negative 2. Right? 
Yes, okay. yes. Sir. Right. So the question will be, what graph was stretched by a factor of negative two? Right. Now the answer for that question will be, it will be the graph of y equal to cos x. For now, forget about the negative two for vertical shift. Let's talk about the negative two for for the stretch. Right. So we are saying. The graph of y equal to cos x, which is the basic graph of, of cos, right? It was, it was reflected, okay? Or rather, I would say it was stretched by 2 first, okay? So we are saying, let's, uh, let me just open a new page. So our equation is f of x equal to minus 2 cos x minus 2. For now, Let's concentrate on this part. Okay? Let's neglect the negative 2 for vertical shift. So, if I were to ask you in words what happened, right? The question would be the graph of y equal to cos x, right? This graph, it, it was shifted, or rather, I would say it was stretched by two units. To a graph of, to a new graph which would be y equal to 2 cos x. Are you following that? Yes, sir. So initially the amplitude was 1 due to the transformation by a stretch factor of 2. The amplitude changed from being 1 here to 2 there. Then, because of this minus here, what did I say the minus re represents when I spoke about reflection yesterday? Yeah, I see that too. Right. So, the third thing which happened, the second thing which happened, that this graph now, it is transformed by a reflection about the x-axis. Therefore, the new equation becomes y equal to minus 2 cos x. After that, the graph was moved by two units downward. So the final equation becomes y equal to minus 2 cos x minus 2. So there were, there were three transformations that took place. A stretch, all right? This is the stretch. I can see. Then that's the reflection. And the final one was vertical shift. Okay. Yes. Are you getting it? Uh, yeah, I understand that, sir. Wait, yeah, I think I see. So the minus there, right, in terms of transformation, it represents reflection about the x-axis. But if we relate it to the general equation, is the value of a, which is a constant that we use to determine the amplitude. So, there is a connection between transformations, amplitude, and the constant A. Okay, so, hmm. uh, in the sketch of our basic graph, um, the, graph, uh, the graph for cos started at positive 1. Yes. So if we reciprocate, I mean, well, like if we reflect it, will it not go to negative one now? Like Ye yes. Start at negative one. Yes. You could also and you could also uh, explain it based on what you are saying. So you are saying instead of sta of starting with stretching, you start with reflection first. That's fine. So you can start with the reflection first, then you stretch it. Then after that, it goes through vertical shift. You come back to the same equation. Okay, yeah, and then when we vertically shift it, it will then start at negative 3, correct? Yes. But, okay, can you please go back to your answer? I think, yeah, I don't know, maybe I'll... Alright, look here in terms of, before I, I, I carry on, right, let's analyze it based on what you are saying. If, if we start with... Uh, we start with y equal to cos x, right? Let's reflect it about the x-axis. The new graph 
do you agree with me it becomes minus y equal to cos x? Yes, sir. If we reflect about the axis, then let's stretch it by a factor of 2. It will become y equal to minus 2 cos x. Do you agree then? Yes, sir. Then, finally, let's move this graph by two units downwards. Remember, remember, what is the amplitude of this graph? Y equal to minus 2 cos x. What is its amplitude? Uh, it would have to be 3, negative 3. No. No. The amplitude is a 2. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Remember, your, your amplitude is related to this graph, to, to this value. Amplitude is the positive value of A. So here, our value of A is equal to negative, negative 2. Therefore, the amplitude will be equal to positive 2. You can't have a value of A which is different from the amplitude in terms of the value. There has to be a connection. You can't say the value of A is negative 2 but the amplitude is 3. It doesn't work that way. Yes, sir. I see now. Okay. So our amplitude for y equal to minus 2 cos x it's a 2, all right? But because of the minus, the graph is going to start with a maximum turning point, which will be at, uh, at y equal to 2. Then we drop it by 2 units. We bring it down by 2 units. So it will end up getting to this point where you see it now, at this point here. Initially, it was at 2 before the vertical shift at 2 there. You see here? Initially, it was here. Before the, before the vertical shift. Then if you move it by two units downwards, it goes to this point. Then, initially, for, for the uh, negative y values, it was here. This point that you see at minus 4, it was previously at negative 2. So it moved down by two units. Yes, uh, I see, I see, I see. Okay. All right. I understand now, so it's fine. All right. Okay. Right. Then the graph of tan. So this one here is g of x equal to minus tan x plus one. Okay. And please, your graph must have the two asymptotes. Right? The equation of this one is x equal to 90 degrees. The equation of that one is x equal to uh, 270 degrees. Alright? Okay, so mark your work that you're supposed to, to have that, that graph. Alright, then the next thing now, we need to write down its amplitude. Okay, the amplitude is undefined. The amplitude is undefined. The period is equal to 180 degrees. Then your domain it to be x is an element, we are starting from 0 degrees up to 360, but we have to put conditions, but x is not equal to 90 degrees or x is not equal to 270 degrees. So when you are writing the domain for the tan graph, make sure you don't forget to write this, this part here, it's very very important, okay? And then the range, the range is y is an element of real numbers. Okay, then the next question which we had was what value of x is g of x greater than zero? Right? What value of x is, is uh, 
g of x greater than zero. Okay, now to determine the answer here, if g of x greater than zero, it means we want the y values to be above the x-axis, all right? So, this is a reference point, that's also a reference point to the zero, so between the zero degrees and this point here, the graph is, uh, is gra uh, the y values are greater than zero, so our first solution would be between zero degrees, less than x, now, what will be the value then? Yeah, you, you may need to, to do a calculation, but the calculation is very simple. What is the value of y here? It's zero. So if you put if you put x equal to zero then, sorry, y equal to zero here, right? Then you might need to solve that uh, equation. Okay? So you need to know what is the value of x at this point here. Can someone solve for us that equation and tell me what is the value of x here? You have to solve this equation. You put zero where there is g of x, then you solve the, uh, the equation. Well, what will be the answer? What's the answer? You can't tell me that no one can solve that equation by putting g of x equal to zero. Sir, it's five. It's what? Forty-five. It's going to be 45. All right. I want you to be aware that, yeah. yes, based on my, uh, uh, on my graph, right, based on my graph, it's very important for you to be aware that if you look at it in terms of the scale on this graph, it don't make sense to have this point being equal to, being equal to 45. 45 is the sum is there, but that has to do with uh, the software. So, it means you're supposed to have 45 degrees there, so the answer was 45 degrees. Now, this is not the only answer. Also, this is the reference point. And the asymptote is, again, a reference point because between 90 degrees and whatever value is here, right, the graph has got positive values of y. So, what would be the value of x at this point? Can someone uh, tell us what's the value of x here? Alright, because of time, the value is going to be 225 degrees. Okay, remember, between this point and that point, that's the first quadrant, time is positive, between 180 degrees and 270, that's the third quadrant, time is positive. So, the answer there is going to be 225. So, our next answer will be 90 degrees is less than x, and x is less than 245 degrees. Then the final answer, there are three intervals. Also, in the fourth quadrant, right, in the fourth quadrant between 270 and 360, we know that the value of x is 360, there is an asymptote, right, at 270, so the other answer will be 270 degrees is less than x is less than 360 So those will be your, your, three, your three solutions for that question which says, for what values is g of x greater than zero? All right.
Are you following? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, 